We spoke to Dan Rice, special advisor to the commander in chief of Ukraine's armed forces, and he told out front that these types of weapons are five to ten times more lethal than Ukraine's current weapons, and they are more effective against Russian personnel and armor. And here's why. I'll show you a graphic here. The first one shows the blast area from just one normal high explosive round. The damage that bomb lands about 160 feet. Now let me show you a cluster bomb, the ones Ukraine is now asking. 88 little bomblets go out. They scatter over an area of more than 320 feet. That is why Ukraine wants them. If they're going to aim at a group of Russian soldiers, they don't just have one hit and it spreads out. They can kill a lot more of them. Will Ripley is out front live in Kyiv tonight to begin our coverage. And Will, what is the latest there tonight? We're going to play a little bit more of this clip here in just a second there. And that's very disturbing because cluster bombs uh, are in violation uh, of, uh, geez, uh, I don't even know what to even call it there. I cannot even believe that they're requesting such uh, ammunition. But, you know, it goes to figure, even in Iraq, we were using them over there as well. Uh, totally in violation of, of, of every norm of war you can possibly think of. Let's listen a little bit more here. Well, you know, I've seen the impact of those cluster bombs firsthand. We met a woman who had one go through the wall of her children's bedroom. These are very serious business. Ukrainians also developing drones. They're flying deep into Russian territory. Drones that have hit strategic air bases as close as 500 miles to the Russian capital, Moscow. You have President Putin threatening nuclear weapons and already using 1980s Soviet era nuclear weapons on Ukraine. He's just launching them as dummies right now without warheads. But they're landing, they're lobbing themselves into buildings, and the Ukrainians know that these missiles were built in the 1980s to carry nuclear warheads, of which Putin has plenty. Is that a sign? Is that a signal for the people of Ukraine? Is it an attempt to try to exhaust their air defenses? Either way, the Ukrainians certainly know what's at stake here. That's why they're launching more counteroffensives. They're defending Bakhmut, which Russia is trying desperately to take. Well, the whole thing is, is it is true when it comes to Russia. Uh, the United States is really pushing NATO, in fact, in general, is pushing to get Russia to use nuclear weapons against the United States, as we mentioned before, to bring down the United States and to bring about a new world order. So it's kind of interesting to see how uh, Ukraine is playing out, especially with Menachem Schneerson saying years ago, uh, that they would take down Ukraine, they would take go in there and and basically exterminate the Slavic people. Uh, they would use Russia to do so, and they would have Russia thinking that they're taking back their their motherland. At the same time, they would have Ukrainians thinking they're fighting for their lives, which in both cases that's exactly what's happening. But the nasty thing about this war, though, is what's really going on on the ground. Uh, and that is when Ukraine is not getting enough support from NATO, they just go ahead and lob a few of those rounds at their own people. Uh, so I can only imagine, get a hold of some cluster bombs. Well, if you can't reach the Russians with them, use them on somebody else, I guess. Uh, and then blame it on the Russians. And, of course, we know first, uh, not firsthand, but first very closely, I should say, that uh, that Russia, excuse me, United States was actually the one involved in attacking the air bases deep inside of Ukraine. No, the CNN is totally wrong on that. Ukrainians have not been able to develop drones that can do that. That is U.S. firepower doing exactly that. Putin is no dummy. He knows exactly what's going on. And of course, this situation could easily spiral out of control there. Also, I want to bring up to your attention as well, Egypt joins BRICS Bank. Uh, following the Saudis that did so just recently. So more and more and more, we're seeing BRICS is going to become the next economic superpower house. And I really think that's going to be your true New World Order economics uh, setup. So I don't think it's what a lot of, like a lot of people are thinking there. And also Yahoo News is reporting Earth has been hit by an unusual intense blast of energy from a nearby galaxy that could change our understanding of the universe. Yeah, some huge amount of energy like... Late last year, scientists spotted a 50-second long blast of energy coming towards Earth known as a gamma ray burst or a GRB, which uh, are the most powerful explosions in the universe. Immediately, researchers started looking for the afterglow that such blasts leave behind with the visible light being useful to find where the blast has come from. And it was actually from a very small uh, developing galaxy, no less. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, all kinds of crazy things are going on as it is right now. And... Uh, Oh boy, it's just, it's, it's really, really, really crazy. Uh, I, I do want to apologize too for our Patreon viewers there. 
We were running into a lot of technical difficulties this weekend. In fact, I'm actually running two computers right now. One is actually feeding the other one. I finally figured out a way to get beyond the problems I was having there. Uh, and and, and th just a lot, a lot of things going on right now. Uh, but I'm going to try to get back here in the morning and really start uploading these uh, videos that we would pr pr promised you over there on Patreon. So uh, I appreciate your, your patience. And also, I want to get into the biblical aspect of things. I normally do that on Sundays here. Uh, and I am looking at uh, very, very disturbing information here. This is on Melchizedek, uh, the Quarterly Journal of St. Uh, Philaret's Institute. And of course, what they're doing is they're undermining Melchizedek and the book of Hebrews. You know, I was telling you just recently, you know, just quoting for you how the scripture says, if they say, lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not. And I said, I guarantee you the thing's going to come is they're going to try to tell you that Jesus is buried somewhere here on earth. Uh, I think it's Paul Wilbur on his broadcast just was doing a video exactly with that in mind, saying that, oh, wow, Jesus, he didn't really die on the cross. He lived over in India until he was 80 years old and died a natural death. Hmm, well, just give them a little bit of time before they decide to tell you, oh, by the way, he's over here. So the vultures can go gather over there. Uh, so look, and I've got to really get into this article right here. I'm a member of this organization, so I'm able to uh, uh, get the, the peer reviews and read them. Uh, A.B. Somo uh, wrote this one here, the image of Melchizedek and the epistle to the Hebrews and the Jewish text of the Second Temple period. And so basically, he's going to take and show you that Melchizedek is more so a historic, uh, it's not a historical, but a, but a, um, oh, just kind of like a, an example of a character. It's really a trash on the Word of God, and, and, and I have got to deal with this, because I'm going to show you the ancient documents where Melchizedek is a real individual, and yes, Jesus was a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and have a blessed evening.